This is the EpiPen that I carry with me wherever I go in the hope that should the worst happen, it will save my life. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Consumer Protection Act, the law that should stop the worst from happening. Hello, my name's Holly and I'm here to talk to you about product liability, expectations and why we should cry over spilt milk. A food allergy is a hypersensitive response of the immune system to a normally harmless substance such as peanut or cow's milk. Anaphylaxis is a particularly severe type of allergic reaction which happens fast and can lead to breathing difficulties and even death. There are over 2 million people in the United Kingdom living with at least one diagnosed food allergy. And although the number of fatalities is thankfully trending down, the number of people being admitted to hospital with anaphylaxis is increasing. So we have a problem. Despite wider availability of medicines and greater public awareness, allergic reactions are still happening at an alarming rate. There are very few examples of wrongful supply of an allergen being tested in law, and the litigation rates are incredibly low considering the scale of the problem. Almost every allergy sufferer will have had at least one allergic reaction while eating out. I've probably had at least 20. Food packaging can be very misleading and difficult to read. For example, a vegan packaging, not suitable for milk allergy sufferers. And when waiters and chefs are not properly trained or per are perhaps flustered, very costly mistakes are made. The law is meant to protect us. So where is the law here? Clearly, a new approach is needed. The Consumer Protection Act, I believe, is the, the approach we're looking for. By redefining food, not as a food, but as a product, made not of ingredients but components. This new arrow arrives in our quiver. Before the Consumer Protection Act, it used to be that you had to prove not only that a product was defective and that harm was suffered, but that harm was the direct result of a producer breaching a duty of care owed to the consumer. The Consumer Protection Act introduces strict liability. Strict liability means that so long as certain conditions are met, such as that there is a product and the product was defective, the producer can be held liable for har any harm caused to person or property. The product is therefore at the centre. So first we need to decide, is food a product? The Act defines product widely and includes non-tangible entities like electricity and medical products like blood. We won't face problems here. Our next question then, how do we prove a defect? Section 3, subsection 1 of the Consumer Protection Act says that a product shall be defective if its safety is not such as persons generally are entitled to expect. This is an objective test. It doesn't ask what we actually expect or what a certain type of person, such as a food allergy sufferer, would expect. Instead, it asks us to consider factors such as any marketing accompanying the product, any mark or labelling on the, on, on the packaging, and even what is reasonably be ex could reasonably be expected to be done with the product. For food products, the most basic expectation is that a food contains what it says it contains and doesn't contain what it doesn't say it contains. A food allergy sufferer might have a particular interest in this expectation, but it's still a general expectation. Whether you avoid gluten because you're allergic or you simply want to avoid gluten is irrelevant. The fact is we're all entitled to expect that our food is what it says on the tin. Eating food is also entirely reasonable. A food allergy sufferer who checks the ingredients and then eats the food based on that representation has acted reasonably and no higher standard of care or diligence can be expected of them. We are all entitled to expect that a food would be defective if it, if it, it wasn't as we were expecting. Of course, if it were that straightforward, we wouldn't be in the situation we're in. A food can't be held to be defective for a risk that is known to the consumer, or a risk that's obvious. Precautionary allergen labelling, or PAL, involves the declaration of an ingredient that's not included as an ingredient in that product, but nevertheless may have come into contact with it at some point during its production. However, the problem here is that PAL is unstandardised. Experts at Utrecht University in the Netherlands found, asked consumers with and without food allergies to compare three types of PAL, traces of, may contain, and produced in a factory. The results showed that 
consumers attributed a far higher level of risk to may contain compared to produced in a factory, despite manufacturers using the two interchangeable. Not only is PAL misleading, it also makes a hard job a lot harder. It's not easy living allergen free. And it's not helped by the fact that PAL is used far too much. A, su a study run by the Food Standards Agency found that 69% of cereals say may contain peanuts, despite none of them having any nuts in their ingredients. And this works both ways. A study in 2020 found that one in five food products without a PAL declaration contain one traces of one of the top 14 major allergens. As it stands, it's unfeasible to expect food allergy sufferers to avoid PAL religiously. It's overused, unstandardised, and is suggested by some to be applied purely to exclude liability. Of course, a, such a declaration could be considered when determining whether a product's defective, but it's not enough to automatically shift the strict liability. We, there needs to be a legally standardised approach to PAL, because at the moment, it's helping no one. The Consumer Protection Act, as I've shown, offers a new approach to the food allergy problem. But why is this approach needed? There are acts in place that deal directly with food, notably the Food Safety Act 1990. Section 14.1 of the Food Safety Act says that any person who sells to the purchaser's prejudice any food which is not of the nature or substance or quality demanded by the purchaser shall be guilty of an offence. Now, a food that contains an allergen it isn't supposed to, is not the substance demanded. So this act does cover wrongful supply of an allergen. But I can't enforce this act. You can't enforce this act. Section 6.1 says that only public authorities, such as Food Standards Agency, can bring charges. So if I suffer an allergic reaction at a restaurant because a restaurant wrongfully gives me a meal containing milk, I have to contact my local environmental health office, who has discretion about whether to investigate and press charges if any wrongdoing is proven. A restaurant in Derbyshire was prosecuted under this act after they served a, me a meal containing peanut protein to an allergic consumer, causing them to suffer a life-threatening allergic reaction. The, the restaurant pleaded guilty to four offences and was fined £4,000 plus £3,900 in council costs. The allergy sufferer, received nothing for the physical and psychological trauma caused by the experience. There's a clear public benefit to having food allergies and food crime investigated by public authorities, but this does not preclude your consumer right to have personal recourse. The Consumer Protection Act targets individuals with direct and straightforward redress. As a general note, whether you have a food allergy or some other medical condition or some other quirk that sets you apart, you still have your consumer rights and no one can take those away from you. The Consumer Protection Act might be 36 years old, but it's not reached its full potential. Its strict liability lowers the burden of proof for us as consumers and makes accessing judges justice far more straightforward. In terms of food allergies, precautionary allergen labelling may pose a problem in court in, whether, in determining whether a product is defective. But it, it's understandardised and ad hoc application means that we can't assume it automatically represents a passing of risk. But at least to more accurately portray that risk to the consumers if, if it's going to be of any use at all. The legal system's here to protect us. So, but it can't do that unless people know their rights and stand up for them. Maybe one day we'll live in a world without food allergies and all this will be for naught. But, until that day, and for all our sakes, perhaps we all need to start crying over spilt milk. After all, it might just save my life. Thank you.